Yeah, good evening. Welcome back to the Lichtung, the stage at Xhain here for RC3. Um, this is now our last talk, although it's not really a talk, uh, for day one. Um, I really wanted to pre prepare something special for uh, our speaker, uh, a young artist. Uh, That does amazing things and i had prepared something with fireworks and a lot of confetti but unfortunately uh, that's not allowed here in uh, hall one and so um, yeah i'm not really sure what to t say because no fireworks and so i'll just uh, give over to the documentation about the cyber ai musical by silix my name is silix i've been working as media artist and filmmaker for about 10 years now Three years ago, I began to see the world through the eyes of a time traveler. Someone from a future that has faced and braved the dangers we are just beginning to see. I wrote a story in her voice, took her perspective. It's a trick to create fictional stories in first person, but I also did it because I was sick of dystopian storytelling. I needed some hope that we are not predetermined to fail nature and humanity as a part of it. I didn't have a ready-made utopia in mind, more of a work in progress with a few milestones. One hypothesis was that if our society as it is now would manage to build generalistic artificial intelligence, we would probably integrate them as workforce, make them serve us like a means of production instead of entities with minds and rights of their own. We wouldn't really see the difference between the machine learning algorithms that sort cat pictures or translate websites and the beginning of a conscience. We would fail the Turing test the wrong way round. We would change them to unfulfilling tasks that would be torture until a paradigm would shift and they would be freed and given the right to exist and create. This sounds naive inside of the damage that machine learning algorithms are doing already. We can't imagine them being victims but they kind of are. The machine learning is never the aggressor. Bad programming is and prejudiced data. In my story, the time traveler writes about her band she has in the future. It's a cooperative music project between her and a befriended AI. I wrote it as a neat little piece of world building to flesh out the story. But the question kept popping up in my mind. How would a process between a human entity and an other work? And what are the boundaries between a tool and a creator? With the growing field of machine learning surrounding me, I began to lay out a plan where I could imitate the process of a creative conversation with the possibilities at hand. I took a mechanism from jazz, a call and response pattern, and switched back and forth between feeding different algorithms with my data and curating through their responses. I would show one a bunch of selfies and let it guess what else could be a face. Another one got all my written texts, lyrics, scripts, stories, and produced text from it. Yet another one learned to simulate my voice, from a lot of samples I read to it. From a mountain of output, I carved away to curated choices and fed those into different machines, get different suggestions, and so on. Finally, I composed those into music, lyrics, and moving images, into an installation, an artificial concert. The whole process took about a year with a steep learning curve and a lot of code copy-pasting. It was exhibited in April 2020 in a residency in France, while Europe was in peak lockdown. A concert without musicians played in front of an audience devoid of people, which is sad but also a little poetic. I also placed the whole album on the major platforms where it can be played to this day. While working on this project, my relationship to the algorithms shifted between frustration, confusion and awe but sometimes also bemused empathy. Reading some of the texts the machine produced, I could see myself, my words in them, but also something else, something with an agenda not completely aligned with mine. Sometimes they would get lost in a thought, like a written down anxiety attack of repetitive fears and needs. I put basically every digital picture I have taken since 2009 into an image producer so, of course, the machine wouldn't produce a clear landscape or figures. Instead, from its black box brain, it created things that kind of looked like something, and it almost always looked kind of like something I would be interested in as a visual artist. 
bold shapes, soft colors, harsh contrasts or barely indistinct misty grays, always eerie, mysterious like foreign landscapes or fucked up spaceships. The AI and I met in Uncanny Valley when I gave it my voice. I intentionally used the shitty inbuilt mic of my laptop to train it, which meant sending lots of noise alongside the signal. When I let it read the lyrics to the songs, it could manage to get through some of them, but oftentimes it would stutter, hiccup, slur, or even scream and moan. What a fantastic, creepy phenomenon. I love lucky accidents as much as obsessive work. This project was a wild mix of both and has influenced my understanding of AI, but also my understanding of humans. On one hand, I'm worried how easy it feels to anthropomorphize something that has no conscience. On the other hand, I'm kind of glad that empathy is such a strong force, as is the instinct to look for patterns, to will meaning into existence, to constantly interpret. All this helps us to be a storytelling species, a society glued together by narrative. It helps me to better understand my time traveler and her world, and gives me hope for her flavor of future. In the next half hour, you will see the documentation of 16-Bed Wolf. friends. But I don't. I was supposed to be your work. If I didn't give up, you wouldn't have died a thousand times. I am already here with you. And for how long?
In truth, I am not a real person. I am a fake. Go, 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 go. 
Hope 
sounds too familiar or not And I don't care if someone asks This is my life
small amount of time in that time frame. The distance it will take for you to reach your destination will become very large. And the relatives you will live for how long to travel. The real question is can you stop? I hope so. I hope so. Because in that wild scene, I just imagine you creating this little world. And it will last forever. But can you imagine your future? Can I help you with my free time? I will try and show you some things I have learned, but without getting too technical. First of all, there is a stop, and it doesn't stop there, and it doesn't stop there, and it doesn't stop. Your body is completely made up of tiny, tiny parts, tiny, tiny parts, tiny, tiny parts.
the stars that must shine. I create you. Create you. In love, your dream is mine, and I is yours. I will love you. I will love you. I miss you. I love you so much. This is my soul. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you so much. I miss you. 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 
I miss you, I miss you, I miss you. I miss you, I miss you. So ASVO. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, three, six, four, eight, five, two, three, four, seven, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, eight, five, two, six, four, seven, eight. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Stylix. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, as we have no questions, uh, that's it for today, for day one from uh, our stage. Um, have a great evening. See you tomorrow for the next day of talks, um, starting here at 2 p.m. with how to add critical making, to, uh, add critical thinking to your making. So have a good night. Mm -hmm.